Okay, welcome to the May 4th um, NMRA PCR Coast Division Saturday meetup. Um, really three things for today. Just a quick update recap on the PCR 2024 convention and um, just a note about 2025. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about future clinics and events. Um, I have not been doing a lot of planning. Um, and then we're going to do coast modeling um, and talk a little bit if anybody's got any, any modeling they've been doing. So with that in mind, um, very quickly, the convention is officially over. Oh. Um, I think oh. a good time <laughs> was had by all. Um I think came off very well. Thank congratulations to the Coast Division and all the Bay Area folks for volunteering and for helping drive it and attending and opening their layouts and doing clinics and everybody from the PCR. All in all, I think it was a good convention. Um, you know, a couple of factors. I, I didn't put any slides in on this. We had 167 attendees. That was up, you know, somewhere between 25 and 35, depending upon your count, um, you know, the last convention included the Western Pacific um, Historical Society. So when you look at it from a, a PCR perspective, we were up, uh, you know, at least 25 to 35 in, over the last couple of conventions, which is good because I think that starts to turn us in the right direction. Um, you know, we had 83 people on a virtual convention, very successful virtual convention, something we have to talk about, you know, as a region do we want to do that again i think there's an opportunity to turn our re our virtual convention into a uh, you know a significant annual event that's that's more than just our convention can be much more of a national or global event um with that in mind um what i wanted to do is really talk about where we're going so the next place we're going is to San Luis Obispo. So, you know, make your plans. I don't think the registration portal is open yet. I'll send out an email when that is available. Um, what, what's going on there? And we'll, we'll basically be uh, San Luis Obispo, March 27th to 30th. Um, from, what, from what everybody said at the convention, very similar um, structure to what we had um, in, um, in, um, in Silicon Valley this year, um, it'll be basically Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The one big difference is um, there will not be, excuse me, there will not be a Saturday night banquet. Um, Saturday will be just like Thursday and Friday with clinics in the morning, clinics in the evening, layout tours and activities during the day, prototype tours. And then Sunday morning will be a breakfast that will include the award ceremonies um, the contest awards and the annual PCR awards. And that'll all be done on Sunday and in conjunction with the business meeting. Um, th the reason for doing that is really very simple. Um, doing a banquet has two impacts. It has a big cost impact because you've obviously got to you know, charge for it. The hotels want to charge for it. And doing a banquet at a hotel really limits the hotels you can go to. And the hotel they've chosen in San Luis Obispo um, is not one that would has, is amenable to doing a banquet. So they would not have been possible if we mandated a banquet. So a decision was made to basically have more clinics. And part of the hope is that for people who can only get Friday off, this will give all day Friday, all day Saturday clinics to be able to go to at the convention. Um, so mark your calendars, um, more details still coming out about that. Um, any questions, comments about the convention? Um, for me, it was an honor to be part of the committee and to make so many people, give so many people the opportunities to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, ab absolutely. Uh, you know, I think it was great. Um, you know, Steve's here. The San Ramon modular group got set up. That was really cool. Um, the contest room, we had, I think, some really good swap meet participants. Not a lot of vendors. Um, we could have a conversation about that if there's interest. Um, vendors are very hard to attract to get to our event. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what O-Scale West looks like this year. Um, but anyway, I think overall, good, good convention um, and exciting convention next year. Mm -hmm. Bill, uh, yes, 
Yeah, my one other comment is that I I understand the limitations, but it sure would be nice to have recorded all of the clinics and instead of just a few. Yeah, you know, it, it would be great to be able to do more. The challenge is just having the technical wherewithal. You know, so really, you know, if you look at doing recording, that takes a person in each room with the equipment to record it um you know that's not to say it's not doable but it would require an additional volunteer for basically all the clinic time for each room um to be able to record it um you know the the second thing is that we really don't want to put those recordings willy-nilly up on the internet mm -hmm. Um, you know, th this is kind of, there's, this is a double-edged sword, right? In one way, it's nice to take those clinics and put them out there. On the other side, you know, we don't want to devalue attending the convention and going to the convention. So mm -hmm. at this point, what we're going to do is basically the clinics will be up for two weeks. Um, they are up. You, there was an email that went out. I hope everybody saw it, that mm -hmm. the, the clinic recordings are up, um, on the, on uh, available to everyone to watch. They'll be there through Sunday, um, whatever date that is, the 17th, I think it is, of, um, of May. And then we probably won't put them up on the internet. Um, we may actually use some pieces of some of them as part of the promotions for next year, um, but that'll probably be it. Um, so to some extent, that kind of reduces it. But I, I hear your your comment, you know, one of the things we talked about is do we try to take a second room and do a second room in the virtual, but that actually then takes two people, one person for the video recording and one person to kind of manage the, um, kind of manage the, the online activity. Um, but that, that'll be something we'll, we'll talk about next year. Bill? Yes. I have been people are after me to say, uh, are we going to be, they want to have me uh, put up all the uh, clinic presentations for people to look at. And I am uh, needing to get some guidance on, on this uh, because I told people that there, we would have their clinics, uh, you know, on our secure database and other people wouldn't have access to them at all and putting them up somewhere. Uh, I, I need to get some guidance because I don't so, feel comfortable so, right now. So, uh, you know, what our traditional, our traditional past activity has been is that we do not actively, have not actively put presentation material up. Um, I actually don't have a problem with it. I would not put up a PowerPoint. We'd put up a PDF. Um, we can serve, we can survey the clinicians and see if they are interested in doing that. And if so, we can put them up and make them available to the attendees. Um, and it would be I, it would be it would be limited just to the attendees. Yeah, I would I would again limit it to the attendees just because I, I think that's reasonable. Um, how how would they access the? Well, we we would send them we would send them out a link in an email. Okay, is what we would end up doing. So let's let's survey and see. You know, normally, the way I've done it when I do a mm -hmm. clinic is I I put the PDF up online on my site, uh -huh. you know, and, and basically it's on in a Google Drive, right. and then at the end of the presentation, I put a link and a QR, you know, a QR code link to the PDF presentation so people can download it. Um, so you know, I think we can ask and see if there's interest. Is it going to be? Uh, so it would be by by clinician. That clinician A says yes, clinician B says no, and then we'd right, we'd, right, okay. Yeah, let's okay. let's go back and see. I we really didn't ask because people generally have not been that fired up about it, but we'll see. Yeah. Hey Dave, yes, mine, sir. You got you got a yes because I'm trying to you know put out a new facet of the hobby. So mm -hmm. the more it gets advertised, the better it is. Uh, Phil, yep. will my work clinician worksheet I have continue to be available to me so I could uh, all the stuff on the drive is still available, still there. Okay. Yeah, the and the final clinicians are up there, so l let's have a separate conversation. We Thank can, you. Yeah, I would appreciate. Yeah, we got to cool. think our way through that. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and one thing I really wanted to talk a little bit about today was kind of events going forward. Um, so, you know, we're, we have an auction scheduled kind of in our event planning for December. You know, is there a lot of interest in doing an auction before December? So this would mean it probably would be in June. Mm. Um, is there, you know, is there... What what's kind of the general feeling of folks? Are folks fired up for something like that, or kind of burned out, or is it just kind? I of, just kind of got to feel of this group before we push forward with it. I'm trying to catch my breath after the convention and catching up with family and other stuff here, and the show in uh, Pleasanton, which is going to take up pretty much all my energy. Yeah. Any other thoughts about? I don't see any reason in June. Personally, I'm going to be out of town for a lot of June. Yeah, see, I think that's the problem we're getting. So my kind of my thought is probably let the next auction just be in December. Um, You know, if you wanted to sell stuff, there were opportunities at the convention. Um, So probably December, sounds like December. Um, Probably do a South Bay historical railroad society i'll probably set that up for some time in september i need to look at the dates and see what kind of conflicts there are in late september um and then i guess the question is 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 there interest in a field trip um the red division has a summer picnic scheduled at the western railway museum um we could decide to piggyback on that i need to get the dates i think it's in i think for some reason, it's in July, and I don't know the exact dates in July. I can think of and find out about that. I mean, we could essentially double that and make that a com- combination, you know, Coast Division and Red event, or we could do a separate event there. Um, you know, the other place I was thinking we haven't been to in a while and might be interesting is schedule a CSRM trip, you know, and take the train up. Uh, any other thoughts on you know, trips or or field trips or events or outings over the rest of the year. Combining something with Redwood Empire Division is another chance to us to meet our fellow NMRA members in a nice, yep. relaxed setting. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Yeah, it might be interesting. Okay, Where is me, the Western Railroad Museum? It, it, it's up on the yeah. other side of the Carquina Straits in, I don't know what the town is. In Rio Vista. Rio Vista. Yeah, it's up by, you know, Fairfield. It's up that way. You get, you know, it's on the other side of 680 Fairfield out in that area. Is that you the know. traction one? The yep. track, yeah, it's the traction one where they okay, got Okay, I've this. been there. Yeah, I know where it is. Yeah. yeah. That's the one that's getting the three bark cars. Yeah, it's a really uh, great museum. Yeah, it's, the only downside to it is it's way north, so a lot of the South Bay folks, it's a long trip, but I don't know if there's any necessarily a way around that. Um, hey, you can't move the museum. <laughs> no, well, that's and that was the problem we had with Roaring Camp, was it was too far. I think it was a long drive. But anyway, let me, let me see about partnering on that. Um, it is closer to the hey, Sacramento. Yeah. Hey, hey, Phil, another another idea, maybe, um, you know, Caltrain is going to electrified uh, equipment here towards the end of the year. Yep. And um, so maybe before that happens, it'd be kind of fun to do a, a some sort of a group event where, you know, there's at least two clubs that I know of uh, that have depots you can ride from one to the other, right, from obviously the Santa Clara, but Menlo Park, there's a de- uh, club in the depot there at Menlo Park, I believe, as well, right? Yep, the West Bay. So you could do like a, a you know, visit the, you know, set up something with those two clubs where we could visit the two clubs, but also, you know, ride the old uh, gallery F40 equipment, you know, one more time as a group or something like that between the two on a Saturday or something mm. like, kind of fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, that so, could be a, that could be a fun trip. I don't suggestion. know. Do you know of any other? I don't know of any other clubs that like walking distance up north. 
Burling game, Millbrae, there's nothing up that way. Is there that you know of San Francisco? Mm. I think Menlo Park and what where's the the other ones in Well Santa Clara, right? Santa Clara. Santa Clara. So Santa Clara. So those are the two I guess that you could walk to. So we could you know, maybe what we could do is start in Santa Clara, park there, then take the you know, meet there, spend some time at the Santa Clara yeah. facility probably... and then go up to the West Bay facility and then come back. There's probably better parking in Santa Clara than, than Menlo Park, I would think, maybe. Right. Yeah, it might be kind of fun. Just a thought, you know? Yep. Kind of a theme thing. Yeah, let's, uh, I'll think about that one. Let me let me check on the one in, in Rio Vista, and then we'll kind of go from there. Um, that's good input. Cool. Well, with that, I'm I'm done. We can kind of drop into general sharing and discussions. And go Joyce. ahead, Joyce. Joyce <laughs> wants to talk about her event. I I didn't get her event in there. Let me let her kick it off and talk about what she's doing. Yes, uh, this Saturday, um, May 11th, I'm having a recreation of the um, um, Transcontinental Railroad. We're going to have a big party uh, from 11 to 3. Uh, I put all the information in the chat. Um, I sent it out to, I believe it went out to the um, most of the PCR guys, but um, it may not have gone out to the Redwood group. And I'm looking for someone, please, who can take my blurb and send it out to the Redwood uh, region group. Uh, is there anyone who can do that? Well, you sent it on groups.io, right? Yes. It went out that, there. Does that go to the Redwood group? That goes to everyone who's on the groups.io. But not everybody who's in uh, Redwood Empire Division. There is that that difference. I right. There it... may be some people that are not, but th whether they open their emails or not, that is another question. I mean, when I send out emails to Coast, only about 60% open them. And I'm assuming there's a fairly direct correlation between the 40% that don't open their emails and the 40% that um, that um, are not on groups.io. Um, okay. Is there anybody that doesn't know about the party? Um, it's by information is in three different, it wouldn't fit into one, um, uh, chat space. So it's in three different chat spaces. Um, and how many people, uh, can I just get an idea of how many people are coming? Okay. David Gibbons and Phil. Good. I will try to drop by for sure. Um, it's a chance to see it's a chance to see Joyce's fun uh, garden railway and uh, have some good food at the potluck. I'm looking forward to the event a lot. It'll be it'll just be fun instead of a lot of hard work. Like well, the well, <laughs> well let, let, let's do some qualification there. There will be food. Whether or not it will be good or not is probably in the eye of the beholder. Ah. Potluck food, potluck food is potluck. always good, Phil. I'm just teasing. I have invited all of my garden friends, and they are great cooks. The food is going to be spectacular. Uh, so there will be lots of food. We are going to reenact. I have mm -hmm. all of the scripts. We're going to reenact the actual event. We're going to dress up. You don't have to dress up, but if you want to wear a costume, mm -hmm. it'll be more fun. Uh, we're going to choose parts, and we're going to uh, act out the little script. I think it takes about half an hour. Um, and uh, we're going to, I have the locomotives, both the 119, and I have the Jupiter. Uh, we're going to have them approach. Uh, we're going to do the little, it's going to be really fun, but it has to have people. So please tell everybody you know about it. Carpool, come to my party. It's this coming Saturday, a week from today, uh, from 11 to 3. And with, with lunch about noon. Yes. Uh, so what? 
the food will be good. That my garden ladies can cook. <laughs> <laughs> they are really good cooks. I like them. Okay. So oh, cool. So that that you know, and that will be basically you know, and if you didn't, if you need it, just pull the email up. You know, if you pull up the post sub twenty three email, the last email that you got about this meeting has all the details about Joyce's um, thing as well. Um, she did make a comment in there that you can come in costume as a working as a worker in jeans or in in period costume. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to just become back to the future and that way I can wear whatever I want and I, I can fit right in. <laughs> all right. Got all kinds of surprises planned. It, it's really going to be a, a fun, light, lighthearted event. So I hope you can all come. And hopefully it won't rain. It won't. No, <laughs> it wouldn't dare. It wouldn't dare. Now we're this is sort of the last hurrah today. I have two things, Phil. Go ahead, go for it. I am looking for operators. I have a layout that is now running. I have a car card and waybill system I've just started, and I'm looking for a few people who want to help me start to tune it up as it was my first try at doing this, and I'm sure that uh the twos and froms and hither and yon that are on the waybills can be polished up. So I'll put something out, Phil, in the uh, for you to put into the next mailing about this. But uh, anybody that's interested in operations and would like to give me a hand on starting to make my railroad be a railroad to be fun to operate and not just sit there and put more scenery on, uh, get a hold of me. Is anybody right off the bat interested? Oh. It's non-habit forming, I'm told. There's one. All right. Noted there, Mr. Osorio. Can we throw some customer satisfaction into it? You bet. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, Carlson Industries, the scrapyard, the the feed elevator, and the uh, hardware outfit, and all those customers serve through the team tracks. We need to make sure that they're at least not outraged, if if not happy. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay, so noted, Larry. Um, I have on my other item, I'm going to, I think, yeah, you can see the image from my other uh, camera here. And this has been an interesting project for me. I've learned a lot about the company called Sunset. Um, they have made uh, brass models for a long time. And this has been occupying my time uh, since the convention, because coming up, of course, we have a show in Pleasanton. The Alameda County Central has opened the entire run of fair down there in Pleasanton. And one thing we suffer from is tiredous locomotivists. These locomotives get run to death. And uh, so I'm trying to get this unlikely unit which is somebody decided to paint as Western Pacific. It's a EMD BL2, of which very few were made. None were in the West Coast and none were in WP, but, you know, modeling license, I guess. But I've learned a lot. First of all, I have a lot of admiration F for... F FYI, David, we're not seeing anything except your background because... Really? The AI you... is not able to... No, just... Phil, look at the other picture. Look well, at the I image. Oh, okay. Uh, right. Yeah. Could okay, you one that, highlight one that, that, Phil? The one that's talking is, yep, there we go. Can you force a highlight? There, Thank there you. Is. That's yeah. what I forgot to ask for. So this is a model by Sunset. The lo The motor is dated November 89, which gives you an idea how old it is. But this one had not been run a lot, but it has been sitting for decades. And the lubrication did a good imitation of glue. So... This truck and the gear case and everything tore down utterly down to the last bit and piece and cleaned in an ultrasonic cleaner and the other one and re and then put all back together. Um, there were a few pieces of hardware that reasons that aren't clear to me, um, but 
those pieces have been, I, I got hard, other hardware and replaced that to service it. Those are bits of circuit board glued to the um, deck that the drive is on. So allow me to solder and unsolder the lead so I could pull the truck off and rebuild, you know, do the cleanup and maintenance on it. And then added a plug-in with the wires off the decoder so I could do headlights down there in the bottom. You'll see a bunch of black silicone hiding a light emitting diode for the rear headlight and the front headlight. And that circuit board provides the dropping resistors for the headlights. And uh, you'll see, whoa, you'll see the cable running to the decoder. I'm trying to get the figures mounted now. And I have learned that windows are a lot harder than I thought. Um, it's not the neatest job to put the windows in that I can't say I'm proud of it, but it's done. I use micro crystal clear and I, I need to work on my technique, but I'm figuring some windows, even if they're not perfect, is better than no windows. So this has been my project. Uh, after the convention, I got busy on this because I want to have it ready for service for the show in Pleasanton. Um, so that's uh, that's been what I've been sort of doing is unwinding from being <laughs> clinic's chair is wrestling hey. with this thing. Yes, Phil. And so one one thought, if you where the couplers are, yes, sir. Um, if I get one of the shells, it may be possible because the pro. So the problem with the couplers is you guys can look at this and see the coupler sits there and it's held in by one screw, which goes through the coupler box and through the center pin and clamps down on it, which. You know, if you get it tight so it doesn't wiggle, it tends to crush the box because they tend to be plastic because you want them isolated because you don't want to have any, you know, electrical issues. So, you know, one thought might be if we could get the exact dimensions of the sides of that and that shape, that round shape, might be able to 3D print a piece that would sit above it and would have a couple of screws for the outside of the coupler box. So you could put that in place, screw the whole coupler box through that in addition. So that would get screwed on with a center screw, but then it would lack to the sides by shape and would provide the two additional side screws for the coupler for the, uh, for the twist. So you wouldn't have to tighten the center up that much. Yeah, I'm going to fabricate a couple out of plastic on this job, Phil, just because I've okay. got it here and, and the metal to yep. do it. But yeah, the, the point here is is you want the couplers to actually center and stay centered, and not you know swing over the side, make it hard to uncouple. So, but that's what I've been working on, and uh, I have a lot of uh, respect for the uh, Agen Precision. I think it was the ones that made the gear trains and stuff, and it's uh, very nicely done. I'm very impressed with the uh, the thing. I'm trying to get the the crew, there's, here's his seat. And once the, the, the glue hardens up, I'm going to try to get him uh, in the in the cab. Anyway, so that's what I've been working on. Um, you see here the, let's see if I can get it up here. The headlight is, my wife Susie has chrome paint. So the tip of the, the LED is sticking in there and I chrome the inside there for the reflector. We'll see how that looks when it's actually on the layout. But uh, anyway, who else has some modeling they have been doing? Well, Joyce, Joyce, Joyce had a crew, a small crew working on her layout prior to the event coming up on uh, Saturday, which involved getting leaves off of track. That's the thing about garden railroading. The real world tends to really come in <laughs> and involve itself in a garden railroad. You, wonderful job, David. Thank you so much for coming and helping uh, get all ready for the party. Um, Phil, might it be possible? I have the little blurb, the whole blurb all in one piece on my desktop. Is there some way that you we can display it just for a minute or two? Uh, yeah, I you have to share, just share, just share screen. 
Share at the screen. bottom, at the bottom, the little green thing that says share screen at the bottom of Zoom. Share screen. Okay. Yes. Click share screen. Yes. And then click on the upper left image. The upper left image. Click on that and then click share at the bottom left. Click on the upper left image and share at the bottom left. Select the picture. Select the upper left image. Okay. There's a whole bunch of pictures there. Click on the upper left one. That'll share your screen. Okay, there you go. Now just go ahead and click on your on that. Make that full size. Make that expand that so it fills the screen. Well, now you changed it from something else. Uh, go back. Go back to your. Go back to your little blurb. Know what I did. There, make that make that full size. Okay, just a sec. Yeah, there, there. Yeah, you, you click those, those two locomotives. Those are very, very hard to find, and uh, they are the replicas of the Jupiter and the one nineteen, and they are just impeccable reproductions. They're they're really beautiful, um, and, and, I, and they both have interesting stories on how Joyce got her mitts on them. Yeah. <laughs> you have to come to the party to hear all about it. And I'm going to have, I have these humongous pictures uh, that are the size of my garage doors. And I'm going to post them of the historical event. And I have three car garage. And there's going to be three huge pictures, one of each locomotive and one of the event itself with the big champagne bottle. And um, people are going to, the real life people that come to the party, we're all going to stand in front of those historical pictures and take pictures of ourselves in front of the history. So I've got all kinds of, and there's going to be a prize for the best costume. Um, so please come. It'll be so much more fun with more people. All right. Thank Phil, you. there is. Oh, sorry, Joyce. Just thank you. Phil, is there um, a survey that will be coming out to go to the convention attendees? I've seen a bit of chatter about it. There, there is a survey. I'm waiting for final feedback. Probably we'll send it out Monday morning, just because we missed. I don't sending things out on the weekend. People tend not to see them. Hmm. So. All right. As I understand it, Phil, what that is, is it'll provide some good feedback to the folks that are going to be putting on the one in San Louis. Well, I think just general feedback and then feedback to them and, you know, you know what was good, what was bad, what would be what would be desirable to be changed. Um, you know, a few just kind of some overall opinions. Yeah. Um, you know, it's good to get some feedback but that'll be going out you know in the next we sent out the video stuff a couple of i think yesterday um the goal was to get the uh, the survey out by early next week so let everybody have a little while to react uh-oh here he comes <laughs> so uh it probably might not uh transmit the sound. These are two very, very short videos, just a few sec, five seconds or so. Uh, so I got the motors uh, and gearboxes into my Mac uh, speeders, my Mac uh, rail trucks. Speeder and that piece of equipment, uh, I don't know if those no. two go together, Fran. No, it's not. <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's a logging rail truck. <laughs> uh, just see if this comes across. I don't know if this is going to be. Is that coming? Yeah. Yep. So that's running. So the the there was uh, is difficult choosing the gearbox, the gear ratio, um, so I can make it run again. Um, and the one I chose is too slow. So this is running at e at eleven volts here. Come on, how do you? You got to hit the hit the play button in the center there in the middle. It's not. It's not. No, in the middle. In the middle. On middle down below. Down below. Down below there. To your right. 
to your right. That little triangle, circle with the triangle in the middle. Hit it. No, I'm not seeing that on my screen. Interesting. You're not seeing, you're not seeing the play button in the middle there? No, let me just I'll just I'll just open it again. But this is this is running at eleven volts and it's like a walking speed. What scale is this? This uh, O scale. About eleven volts. Okay. O O N three, right? O N thirty. O N thirty. Thirty. All right. Yeah. And uh, the back of the cabs and all that. This one, I think, was running at six volts. Oh, ah. nice. So if you want slow, you've got, <laughs> I've, I've got I've got motors now that are about three times that that speed, and there's, it's an easy swap out. Um, run that one one more time. I like that chunk of lead on the uh, the one on the right. I have. I don't know if I have a, a photo of it. Um, the, the, the closest to um, uh, the, the the normal. This the, the scale. The closest to what I could get from the photos that I had. But on, I am. Uh, go ahead. On this prototype, was the deck. The prototype, they built the deck and then they put the cab and the motor and everything on it? Or was it that they go the other way and build I, the deck around it? I, I don't know how I would get the history of how uh, Skagit Iron and Steel Works did that. Right. Um, I, I really don't know. I know it's a, okay. it's a Buddha four, four cylinders, uh, 40 horsepower uh, engine, and there are were lots of. Um, Lots of variations of them. Mm -hmm. That one, I I like that shot. Yeah. Oh my word! <laughs> and as you can still see that is a Mac. That's like a six sixty, I think, a six cylinder, sixty horsepower. I don't on on something like this. Any guesses on what this tubing would be? You're you're taking heat off of air pumped by a compressor is one guess. Ah uh, yeah, there's a tank. I didn't I didn't think of these as um needing air, but I guess so. Well, That's the same one. The, there's clutter on the right hand side that might indicate a hose. And there's a hose hanging off the back of this one it looks like an airline. Mm-hmm. I like this tank. I think that's for refueling in the woods, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it's no, a snow plow. <laughs> Looks like it has Lincoln pin couplers. Yeah, yeah com their combo combination uh, is a knuckle that you can put a, a pin in. It, it, they uh, grind out the middle of the knuckle and drill, drill a vertical hole in it. And they can use either. Wow. I did that in HO once when a KD and it was it was a, <laughs> it was a pain. This is this is the one I'm modeling now. And and you know, you get you get burned out in the middle of the project and you think I want something less more cute, less prototype. So they shrunk it down. You know, took about eight foot off of it, and uh, that's that's still in progress. In fact, that was put on the back burner because I got back on back on my uh, huh. there's the uh, ah. four wheel four wheel pickup. Oh. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is ON 30, 30 inch, right? ON 30. Yeah. Now, that looks like an Athern, a split axle arrangement with the little uh, square bearings, but then you just re-gauged it? Uh, Athern HO is same gauge as ON 30. Mm -hmm. 
it's not it's actually the northwest short line but um or some of the maybe so i forget what company was was making the replacements for that mm. little higher quality than the athens steel yeah but northwest I, short I have line. the athens steel ones too that i'm Working on it's my wasn't sure whether I, I whether to do all corrugated or some corrugated and and uh, wood grain. Mm. So that's in process now. And now you're getting that wood grain out of your printer, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Can the thing pull very much, or is it pretty much it just can move itself? The, 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 it's single axle. Right. So it's a matter of how much weight you can put on it. The motor being being geared down to, uh, you know, uh, 240 or so to one, the motor, I think, can pull a lot. Right. Uh, prototypically, you wouldn't be pulling anything. Maybe maybe a hand car or something. All yeah. right. Or actually, actually, yeah, you could be pulling empties or one log at a time, just getting it into position. Right. Um, and it could it could do that. I wouldn't put a long train on it, just because yep. it, it would look weird with forty, <laughs> 40 horsepower. Yeah. Do, do you have a layout, or is that just a modular display? Uh, I, I have I have two modules. I have uh, two foot by eight foot. Uh, for the California Central Coast. Okay. Very nice. Thanks. I'm I'm redoing the the frame. I couldn't get the kind of resolution I want on these end beams, so the the end beams will be uh, resin printed, and the rest of the frame is uh, filament. Then the cab is resin. The pilots are resin. The uh, Corrugated is filament printed. Hmm. These, these walls are resin. Okay. Is, whether it's, you have filament or resin, are either of those amenable to going after them with like your wire brush to add wood grain that way? Uh, with the resin, you can do it with an exacto. Hmm. Um, the filament is tough. I've done it with a filament, but you you're, you need a strong wrist and a lot of blades. Yeah. Um, uh, so with the filament, the best way to do it is you take the area that you want a wood grain and you spray it with about four coats of filler primer. <clears throat> and then you basically, that filler primer builds up thickness. It's got in its particles that actually have size. So its paint is fairly small the actual particles. Filler primer has much bigger particles, and mm. so it builds up layers. It's designed, if you get a scratch on your car, you can spray it with filler primer, sand it smooth, and the filler primer will fill up the scratch. Right. And so if you put about four coats of filler primer, then you can scrape across it with a razor saw, and it scrapes off, and you get wood grain, and then you paint it with a fixed paint to fix it. Right. Um, that's how I did that. Now, what you probably have to do there because you've got, you've also got the wood grain, the board, the board gaps. You'd probably have to, when you get done, take the back of your exacto knife and run it down the board gaps to reemphasize those because mm -hmm. those would fill in with a filler primer. Or, but just, you, but yeah. This, in the design phase, you could make those a little deeper. but Or you can make them a little be, deeper, exactly. They wouldn't be so. as crisp, though, you're right. I, I think just running, yeah, there's there's not that many of them. And you just basically, when you get done, you do the wood graining. And then the last thing you do is take your X-Acto knife, turn it backwards so you're not cutting, you're scraping, and just run it down each one of those lines. There are about 20 of them across the car, 30 of them. Take you about three minutes to do it. It won't take very long. So... Oh, you O scale people yeah. <laughs> with your techniques. The smaller scale, the smaller scale of us just make do with a wash or something to suggest yeah. a wood grain. So, so I showed this before. So let me, let me go ahead and start. So I went over to David's and actually operated David's fun, layout's fun to operate on. Makes you think a little bit. 
Um, but he had these guys. So this is the MicroMark tool. Um, they sell it with either a point or I guess it's got kind of a, a bit of a, a fixture on the end of it. Um, what David had done was he'd actually cut this down a little bit at the end and and fi and honed it to more of a point to be able to use it. It's nice because it does two things. One is because this thing is lit up, you get to see, you can't see it very well here. You get to see where the, the coupler pocket is. You can also use it as a flashlight to see, read car numbers, et cetera, which a lot of us are hard to see. So I came back thinking, well, you can probably buy a flashlight. Let me see. I think I've got my uh, background turned off. Yeah, I'm being being here without background on. Um, so these guys are cheap on Amazon. Um, it's a basic, you know, just a basic flashlight. And um, what I actually designed was, let me pull it up here. Um, so it started with trying to use an aluminum tube, and it turned out that just wasn't going to work. And then I realized you can 3D print it. So this is is actually a design for a um, for a piece to sit on the end. And I get, get up here, I get to my controls. So basically, the idea is there are light channels here. So if you look through it, you can see all the way down through it. And then on this end, it slides on the flashlight. Um, so basically, this is what you get printed. So I don't know if you guys can see that. Yep. Actually, I probably need to spotlight me. Let me um, hang on. Let me spotlight myself. So, so basically, what you can see is, you know, if you look through it, you can see it's clear all the way through. It's got on the end there. You can see the. Uh, uh, there we get the sun. The reason for the slot down the side is if for some reason you hit this and break off the skewer, you can reach down in there with a pick and slide it out and get it out of it. And then, of course, this end goes on the flashlight. So the idea is you just slide this on the flashlight like that, and it's all the way in. And And then you just take the pick, and the pick slides in here on this end. And now you've got an illuminated pick for doing your, your for going and getting your, um, uh, hitting, the, hitting the coupler. You can see it quite nicely. What's interesting is if you look at this, you can see it's kind of actually lighting up the, the skewer up there at the top. It kind of glows. Interesting enough, it almost looks transparent at the very top. And then it works pretty well as a flashlight. So, you know, if you want to read a car number, it's pretty easy to read a car number with it and hold it back and, you know, see a number and illuminate it. I've already yeah. asked Phil to make me several of those plastic pieces. Uh, I think it's going to be definitely superior to the MicroMark product because yeah, even though I filed the tip of the MicroMark to try to get it closer to a skewer, it, it's still grabby. It doesn't quite work as well as a skewer. So I think what Phil has designed there is going to be a neat little uh addition to our uncoupling tool arsenal yeah so we'll, we'll make a few up for some of the operations guys and have folks try it and see how they like it yeah so that was filament yeah it's just filament yeah a two hour it's a two hour filament print and i'm assuming you could print six of them together and it'd probably take oh, 10 or 11 hours just leave it and let it print away yeah um that's nice. Yeah. I need to design one with a built-in gyroscope from from my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, Fran. We're, well, we're, the, a lot of the, us are there. The, the one nice thing about this, it has some mass, so sometimes that's easier to hold if it's got some mass. Definitely. You yeah. know, it's a little bit, you know, and it's, but we'll see. I, you know, we'll try it and see. You know, another nice thing is you can change the length of the skewer. So, you know, if you're doing end scale, you can use the skewer gets about a little less than an inch up in the holder. So, you know, a three inch skewer would give you two inches clear. A four inch skewer would give you three inches clear. So for HO and 
ON30, you know, a three inch skewer and a two inch skewer. And then, oh, you might want to use a three and a half or four inch skewer. So you get a little more room length to go down and get to the coupler. And you can just uh, change your skewers depending on what layout you're running on. Right. So, you, yeah. It's like, so the flashlight will be easy enough to find or. The flashlights, the flashlights were on Amazon for four for 10 bucks. And I think eight for 17 bucks. And I'm looking at, I'm assuming on AliExpress, you get them for a buck each. I mean, you know, so the, the interesting question is, um, you know, if you look at the, um, at the one from Micromark, they charge 20 bucks for it. So, um, you know, it's an interesting question about, you know, do you make them and sell them for 10 bucks for people who don't have a printer and don't want to fight printing it? Well, the thing about the Micromark is, is if you file the tip to make it closer to a skewer shape to work better, if you drop it on the tip, the tip just crumples up. Don't ask yep. me how I know this. Whereas yep. Phil's idea means you, you, if you damage the skewer, you grab another one out of your pack of skewers that you bought for cheap, pop it in and keep on going. So yep. there's many advantages to what Phil's worked out here. I'm, well, I'm going to go for it. This skewer, I actually was at Safeway and they had the, uh, in the, the bargain bin at the back of Safeway. I don't know if you, <laughs> if you shop at Safeway, if you go to the very back where the door is that goes to the employee area and almost all of them, they seem to have a couple of racks of bargain stuff. And they had, you know, a package of a hundred skewers and they were normally a dollar 49 and they were marked down 50% off. So they were 75 cents per hundred. So I don't know. That's pretty expensive. Three quarters of a penny per skewer. It's pretty expensive. <laughs> oh um, my! So who else has some modeling stuff they're working on? Ken, what you got? Mute. Mute, Ken. Ken, you're still talking to yourself. There we go. There you are. It's better. All right. Um, I have finally gotten over some hang-ups about soldering again. And unfortunately, I need to get this around here. Um, these are um, nano uh, plugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see how small they are. But what I'm doing is, is I had to make a... Uh, uh, a three-way junction, and if we can get that, uh, with a, a small piece of brass, and then uh, the nano plugs, because I need to um, connect the, the the feeds, the multiple feeds from the track on on a. Um, on this uh, PA that I just bought at the convention. Um, because you have pickup on both the rear and, 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 and the front wheels. And then you need a third wheel. Um, um, you need to, to combine those two pickups and then connect to the, um, in this case, Local Fi uh, control uh, receiver controller. It's just that I got uh, I found I could uh, actually solder those. Good. Uh, by the way, interestingly, nano plugs. Um, yeah, where'd it go? Here it is. Um, Nano plugs allow me to uh, uh, put the the receiver in and and unplug it if there's a problem. They help a lot. I'm I'm using them in pretty much all of my DCC installs, so I can separate a shell yeah. from the drive to be able to do maintenance and repair. It helps so much rather than having a skein of wire wandering around inside getting tangled up in the flywheels so, and such so you're using the the black plastic plugs with the pin that runs through and you solder to the pin 
if you're speaking to me, Phil, Sorry, what we're yeah, talking yeah. about is these. Here's a yeah four four pin version, which yeah. I'm using three of the four for the common, the front and the rear right. headlight. Um, and then Ken has something similar there. These are something uh, I buy them as uh, you get them as a uh, a row. Yep. And and, and uh, yeah. Now they, they're they're really nice. For alpha. Yeah, just you know, I use a, um, a a minor saw blade just to separate what I need. I'm less elegant than you are, Ken. I just take a diagonal cutters and chop them apart. <laughs> you know, I waste a few doing that, but it's it's just the main yeah. thing is just to have the the core of it. I found that that sawing most of the way through and then taking a a plier and just uh, sort of pulling it apart. Yeah, snap mm -hmm. it right off. Anyway, so I know I think we talked about this, but just as a, an FYI, as an alternative, um, I bought a bunch of these, a package of these. Um, these are those little two port plastic ones. Mm hmm. And basically you get 30 pairs. So you get 30 of each of these of the plugs. And, and what I do is I color them. Like if you've got, you know, six wires running between a frame chassis and a shell and a locomotive, you're going to have three of these. So you color code them, you know, red, you, you paint them a little bit to a color. So, you know, which ones plug into which one or use. I also use um, shrink tack, shrink uh, shrink uh, wrap on them that's colored um, but they're pretty pretty nice once you plug them together and, and they're, they're polarized phil you can't put and, them and together they're, exactly, backwards. They're, they're polarized and they're much easier to solder because you just solder these wires to whatever wires you have or if you got pads you can just solder these directly to pads so i i'd highly recommend these i'll put a link i'll put a link in the share to those those were on amazon so um I find that the, the on the nano plugs they're not terribly secure when you put, put pull them in. Right. So what I'm doing is 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 on the plug um, the male. I'm um, putting in a, a slight coat of solder over the the male uh, prong, and that uh, when it's pulled together, it it it, it holds uh, well enough for what I'm doing. Good. Now, as to the, the the plugs that that Phil's using, those are fine, and and they probably work well for a larger scale. But but I've got very limited room and clearance on on this project. Um, everything has to fit in, in inside a a Proto two thousand um, PA shell, and and so. Um, the nano plugs are the way to go to make sure that, that I have a removable rather than hard soldering all the wiring together. Are you horsing a speaker in there too? Are you mm -hmm. getting a speaker in there also? Oh, no, this speaker comes with um, um, a, a local FI unit. It's already wired. Right, but you have to fit that into the shell in addition to the loco fi. Yeah, there's there's a spot right here at the at the at the front of the um engine. Here, mm -hmm. there's, um, I, here, I can't show you this. There's a nice little indentation in the um uh, in the casting. Right. Oh, uh, and it it allows me to just flip the speaker in there with a little bit of uh, double sided tape to hold it. Got it. And uh, and be, I because the uh, here's how the the arrangement looks totally. Mm. This is a what I particularly wanted was for for the PA uh, SPPA. Um, is an old um, 
Proto 2000 that was uh, pre DCC. It was actually a DC model, but it was already, uh, it wasn't split frame or, or wired to the frame. Mm. And uh, allowed me to um, um, use the wiring without problems of, of having any any uh, connection issues. Um, but I, I was really pleased when I opened it up and found that it had the uh, um, the section where uh, to the rear they had a, a, a board in there. Uh, and you could have put a plugged it in with a DCC plug, with a D, you know, plug in a DCC, but um, it 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 worked extremely well. I took the board out. Um, this was uh, the board. I just it had a whole bunch of junk on it that I don't need. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> The only thing is, 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 is it had a, a flashing red light for, for the uh, um, upper light on a PA. Right. Which is, uh, which, which would activate it on reverse. Hmm. And, um, or actually on, on emergency too. But um, I'm working out how to uh, uh, wire a, a, a red LED in there. It's oh, it's always fun trying to horse those things in. Uh, I I will say, Ken, uh, the split frame comment you made, I have two um, Bachman F forty PHs and and Amtrak, and trying to make the split frame work with DCC took a whole bunch of bad language. Trying to to get leads out from and isolate everything because both sides of the frame are hot, uh, you know, connected to the rails. And that is a pain in the keister. I wouldn't recommend that as a process to anybody wanting to try to get DCC, especially where the split frame almost completely fills the shell and there's so little room to sneak in the decoder of any size. I, I, was, I, I was particularly looking for the Pro, uh, Proto 2000 which is was bought by Walther's and and they use some of it as their basis for their uh, later DCC uh, um, models. Right, uh, but it was right on that cusp. Unfortunately, mm. the, the the thing wasn't wired with with NMRA coded wiring, so um, <laughs> I'm having uh, to 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 make sure that I keep the, the wires. Uh, separately uh, uh and what i'm gonna do is is takes a little bit of dab of acrylic paint and, mm. and paint the plugs yeah to like make phil like phil's doing to help figure make sure you get the right one to the right place yeah 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 anyway. so you paint a white dot on one end of it so you always make sure white dot to white dot that's what I did with those. I had some of those I used between locomotives. Yeah. 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 No, this um the, the primary ones that aren't aren't DCC wiring compliant are the motor leads. Mm. They did use the red and black for the uh pickup leads. But it was the pickup leads that I needed to do the three junction on. And now I've done it with this. I'll be able to do it on on the two eight O's that I'm I'm uh, uh, modifying for 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 running on um, uh, local five. Anybody else have some modeling they're doing? Mr. Lane, how are you doing out there? Perhaps he's asleep. <laughs> have have we exhausted everybody's everybody's uh, comments for the day? Then, oh, I I just woke up at nine thirty, so ah. <laughs> you I need to relax, Ken. 
Anyway, Joyce, I will look forward very much to see you on Saturday. Uh, I'll be in after I finish taking care of Dad, and you know, getting him ready to start his get him going, and then I can drift over your way. You know, if any of the other reviews could help spread the word, um, because sometimes people don't see the emails until it's too late, and this yep. this may be the last time I give this party. Mm. Uh, but the the script that I have is the official script from the um, uh, Promontory uh, National Park. And we went there last year. And it's a really funny script. And it doesn't take that long to act out. It's just going to be, it's not a garden party. It's a train party. So um, please tell all your friends. Uh, see if you can come in carpools. I, I really hope. Yeah, people will come because it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. All right. Phil, I think we've pretty much covered all the bases. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything, unless somebody else has something, may call it for a Saturday, and we'll see everyone in two weeks if we don't see you at Joyce's party next weekend. Have your mother Every everyone be well. We'll see you, um, if nothing else, at the next Zoom meeting, which is on the, help me here, Phil. Well, today's the 14th, so it must be the, eight, or 4th, it must be the 18th. Right. 9 a.m., and we'll Zoom it again. And, uh, Larry, we'll talk about, I, I'm going to put out something to the, the, the division looking for other folks that would want to uh, pit or join in on a little bit of operations here and we'll go from there. Bye all. Take care, everybody. <laughs>